Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting session on MongoDB administration. So this session basically covers the administrative part of MongoDB and before any further ado, let's have a quick look at the agenda of this session. So first of all, we'll discuss the concepts of scalable and available data sets. And moving forward, we'll learn about the replica set, which is another important aspect of MongoDB. And next, we'll discuss the concept of sharding in MongoDB. And finally, we'll create a production-like sharded cluster. So today, we have a special guest, Murli, who has a ton of experience in this particular field of MongoDB and handling databases. So over to you, Murli. So what is MongoDB administration? MongoDB administration is all about addressing the ongoing operations. That is nothing but the live operations. Maintain all your servers. Simply, I'm calling it as the instances and deployment. There's nothing but all your server. What about the servers that are running in the production? Please take care of it. Perform procedures and processes for operating MongoDB. At every point of time, you should avoid all the bottlenecks that are happening in the performance. At the same time, you need to make sure that your system is always up and running. Only these three are the primary tasks of the MongoDB administration. And the later part, we can see the detailed versions of your these three tasks. So here are the roles and responsibilities of your administrator. So first one, work on schema design with application and development teams. The database modeling is primarily done by your developer itself. Then why we are discussing here? The reason behind that is even though your developer is doing that particular work, you should aware the basic configurations of your collection and databases. What kind of database it is and what kind of relation that exists between the collection? Is it an embedded one or it is going to be the linked one or reference one? So at every stage of your database design, your administration will be part. Administrator will not do the schema design, but he will monitor or he will see all the design that is happening there because in future, if the database goes down, the developer will not fetch in. The first administrator is going to fetch in and he's going to identify the problem. Possible he will fix it, else he will inform the developer saying that, hey, this is the error I'm getting, like, let's come and fix it. Second, design and set up architecture as per the application requirement. Third is going to be the most important and this is the mandatory task for your administrator. If you are administrator, your primary job is always think about your backups and restores. You have to come up with a plan where how frequently you want to take the backup, how to do a restore whenever there is a failure and how to maintain the data without losing. Third is going to be the primary task of your administration. Fourth, apply and share best practices related to the sharding and replication. Because if I want to maintain the system properly, my sharding and replication must be properly configured. So always use the best practices. If something goes wrong, just keep a run notes on it. We can call it as a run book. Always keep a run book for frequently occurring with the issues. Manage users and rules. This is nothing but the security. That is, you need to manage all the users. That is, you need to add the users. You need to define the roles to them. Who and all are authorized to connect to my system? Who and all have authentication to connect to my system? This you are going to do. You are the person who is going to add a developer to the system. Everything will be done by administrator. Next, monitor server, database health at collection level and various monitoring tools related to MongoDB. That is, how much space is occupied? Are there any queries are taking more than the defined time? Is there any database is overloaded? Is there any database that got crashed? Every piece of information about the server, databases, and collections will be taken care by the administrator only. This is what I mentioned. Perform root cause analysis for business impacting issue. If something goes wrong, you're the person who will identify that you try to figure out the issue once you know the issue if you are able to fix it you fix it if you are not able to fix it you inform your developer about it i did the root cause analysis and this is the one i have figured it out but these are the possible fixes i'm thinking about export and import data from mongodb this is another interesting topic this is also called it as kind of a backup and restore that is whenever you are migrating from relational database to the mongodb 
or whenever you want to see the results of your particular collection there your import and export tools are going to be useful so primarily an administrator work is going to be the first work he's supposed to do will be he has to manage the users means he will add modify and remove the users second things he always perform backup and restore operations third he always perform import and export operations whenever there is a migration happening fourth he always monitor your entire cluster or your entire system and make sure that it is free from the bugs that is always operating at the higher performance so these are the basically the primary works of your administrator system configuration and production deployment okay these are the various parameters being an administrator what and all you must aware of you must aware the entire architecture that is nothing but your schema mongodb binaries that is so as i mentioned before there are n number of binaries you should know all the binary details and you should aware of what each binary will be doing now you can see that these are all the binaries whatever is the exe files you can see here all the exe files are the binaries so the first thing you need to do here is being an administrator you must have an idea about what each of this binary will be doing that is very 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 critical platform specific considerations if it is unix how to proceed if it is of your windows how to proceed if it is of mac how to proceed fortunately you don't have anything related to the mainframes mainframes is not getting supported under your mongodb hardware considerations am i going with the commodity hardware am i going with the super computers if i'm going with the super computers no issues if i'm going with the commodity hardware what kind of considerations i should prefer before i proceed with the, any of my cluster mongodb path and concurrency that is where exactly my mongodb is installed what level of concurrency i'm expecting am i expecting the level of concurrency at a collection level or at a document level if it is at a document level prefer to go with the white tiger if it is at a map we want go ahead with the collection level data consistency how the data will be there what is the integrity between the data is my data is mutually exclusive or not all these things comes under the data consistency networking am i under the secured network or not if i'm under the secured network what is my net in and net out if i'm transferring the data over the network what are the procedures i have to proceed do i need to do any compression or not because i have to take the case consideration by default i'm going to have some snappy compression is available by default the compression is always available but still if i want to go with another level of compressions i have to do it synchronizing the clock as well as going ahead with the performance monitoring all the time i have to check my running queries and i have to figure it out is there any query which is running more than the predefined time i have to either kill it or i have to fix it so these are the basic things that a mongodb administrator must aware of architecture for development the architecture in development in production is different from the architecture that is in the other environments so what is the minimum architecture for test and what is the minimum architecture for your production so that is nothing but your architecture for your deployment so there are multiple things if you go with the deployment of the replica set how many minimum number of servers i need to maintain what is the size i need to maintain what are the things that i'm taking for the fault tolerance how to avoid my complexity as much as possible all these comes under replica set the same will be applicable for this shorter cluster as well these are the basic steps or basic awareness that I should have before I go ahead with the MongoDB. So MongoDB binaries, the other way we can talk here will be under what operating systems you can use MongoDB. So here are the various operating systems. We can get the full list of the operating systems from the MongoDB site itself. If you go to the site and if you go to the downloads page, under the downloads page, you can see, select any one of your thing, let's say enterprise version, these are the various operating systems that we can see. The same operating systems only we have mentioned there also. Windows, Ubuntu, SUSE, that is your CentOS as well as Red Hat, Unix, that is RHEL. Both of them are same. One is the enterprise version, another one is the commercial version. OS, that is Mac OS, followed by Debian as well as the Amazon. That is nothing but the Amazon Linux version, which are again available in the two things. One is 64-bit normal version and the 64-bit Linux 2 version. So which one you are using is up to Platform specific considerations, as I mentioned before, what platform I'm applying. Am I working on the Linux? Am I working on the Windows? Am I working on the virtual environments? 
the virtual environments are nothing but the aws azure and google cloud platform if you are working on any one of it how i have to improve my performance that i have to check whatever the ppt you are doing here the ppt has been designed based on 3.2 again how much memory i have to add or what is the difference if i go with the ssd solid state drive is compared with a regular commodity hardware what are the other hardware things available what is the disk space i have to consider all those things comes under your hardware considerations mongodb db path and concurrency again where my exact database path is there concurrency whether it is going to be mfp1 or it is going to be a white tiger if it is a white tiger document level if it is a mfp1 it is going to be the collection level so when it comes to the data consistency integrity i have to consider this i have to enable the read concerns write concerns as well as the journaling so that i don't lose the data as well as when i go with the networking as i said before am i under the trusted network or not if i am under the trusted network well and good though i am under the trusted network if i have used my http as well as the rest interfaces stop them make the connection pool size don't overload or don't bombard your server with the n number of connections compressions by default you are going to have your snappy compression when it comes to the white tiger if i want to go with the other compressions also you can go ahead so that it can reduce some of your size clock synchronization always use your network time protocol this is not going to be issued from the 3.6 onwards prior to 3.6 you don't have this facility that is prior to 3.6 you need to specifically mention in which time zone you are but from 3.6 onwards mongodb is clever enough to identify which time zone you are and from which time zone you are querying the data performance monitoring this is going to be the main thing so the performance monitoring can be done in multiple ways so in unix we are going to use iostat vmstat for doing this particular one for checking your bottlenecks of your database it is going to tell you what are the processes that are running on your system sometimes i can go with the top also top command top command also is going to give me what are the top processes that are occupying more time that are running on my system so here when it comes to the mongodb if i go to the performance monitoring it is little different so we are talking about the performance there are n number of ways you can actually do the performance monitoring in mongodb that too this is very specific based on your operating system as well as i mentioned before there are n number of ways to measure the performance one of the way is i can use a command called db.currentob the db.currentob is the one which will tell me what are the various processes that are running at this particular point of time and it is going to tell me for how many seconds it is running so i have only one process which is running now i don't have anything because it's a clean slate so no process is running the last well known process is only called operational id 51 just a normal shell which run for 0 seconds because it is nothing i don't have anything that is db.currentop is the only command that i have run now you can see here db.currentop is the only command that i have run which run for these many microseconds 67 microseconds it has run that's the reason it is showing seconds running as zero it run only for this 67 microseconds suppose the moment if you hit the db.currentop and if you see that if there is any process running for more than the defined time in mongodb if any program or if any process runs more than 100 milliseconds any program which run more than 100 milliseconds by default will be considered that as the slow running queries so wherever if my number of milliseconds that is number of seconds from which the process is running is more than 100 milliseconds you can copy that particular operational id then you can go with the another command called db. kill op and you can supply that particular operation id here attempting to kill op and it is equal to 1 that is whenever you want to go with identifying the slow running queries one of the way is use db. current op the current op is going to tell me all the current operations that are happening on my system figure out which one is more time consuming pick that particular operational id and use by using the db. kill op kill that particular one this is the one way second exit from here go to the binaries under the binaries you can see something called mongo top so this is a binary that's the reason i'm doing from the mongo i'm doing from the shell the moment i say mongo top 
the mongo top is the equivalent top command in your unix whatever the top command that will do in the unix the same stuff will be done by your mongo top under the mongodb so mongodb version of the top command is nothing but the mongo top it is going to give me all the top processes that are running in my system that is if i want to do from the server level this is the other way i can do it is going to give me all the collection data this the ns stands for the namespace namespace is tell me what are the various collections that are available in the entire server and for each one second i'm going to get what is the total number of read operations write operations as well as the total time it is taking for each and individual collection that is at an individual collection level if i want to have my read write as well as the total time execution operations i can go ahead with the mongo top what else i have as i mentioned before top is the command which is going to give me the top processes the equivalent mongo db version is going to be mongo top there is another command called vm stat the vm stat is going to give me the details about how much memory it relies what is the total memory what is the occupied memory how many read requests are pending how many write requests are pending it is going to give me more detailed information in the unix the same if i go with the vm stat version of your mongodb that is going to be your vm stat that is called mongo stat that is if i go with the dir one more time now you can see that there is another binary called mongo stat so go with mongo stat the moment you get mongo stat you are going to get more detailed data this time it is not giving me for the individual database but it is giving for the entire system it is not talking about the databases but it is talking about the number of inserts that you are doing how many queries you are doing is there any update you perform is there any deletes you are performing at this particular point of time what is the used memory dirty memory is actually talking about page faults virtual v size is actually talking about how much memory that is occupied for your mongodb res is going to stand for residual memory that is available for the mongodb qrw arw are nothing but the how many read write requests are in the queue how many read write requests are augmented net in and not out is going to tell me my network statistics and the time is going to tell me how much time i have or what is the current time stamp cynn stands for the number of connections so 27017 server is actually accessing only from the single client that single client is 27017 itself that is the reason i have only connection as one to the same client i have connected from the multiple users i can have the multiple connections there just a regular vm stat command that you can see it under your unix we are using the mongodb version of that under the mongodb as the mongo stat so totally three we have discussed what are the three things we have discussed here the first thing is going to be i can use current op as well as kill op options to identify and to kill the respective id to see all the top running processes i can depend on a binary called mongo top otherwise i can also depend on the mongo stat but all these are normal methods there is one method which should be powerful compared to all these these are okay as long as you have the standalone server but what is the best way of identifying the slow running queries there is something called profiler this is going to be the most commonly used method of identifying the slow running queries and it is the most efficient method as well if you are going with the sharding environment performance monitoring and maintenance is very very difficult so whenever your cluster size is increasing let's say that your cluster is of minimum configuration that i have mentioned that is the three nodes each node is going to have a three node replica set like that in those cases your enterprise server will not be sufficient you need to go with the ops manager the ops manager is going to do that monitoring work for you monitor visualize and alert on 100 plus performance metric so if your size of your particular sharding or your system is growing you cannot depend on your enterprise server alone there you have to depend on your other tools and those other tools are nothing but your ops manager but ops manager work only with the enterprise server it will not work with the community server 
under the show DBS, I can see that there are only two databases that are available. What I am interested here is how to enable my profiler, how to get benefit out of it. I'm just going with use admin and I'm just looking for show collections. Only one collection is there that is nothing but my system dot version. It is going to tell me what version of MongoDB I'm using. Now I'm just going with DB dot and I'm just seeing what are the commands that are related to the profiler. Can you see anything with respect to the profiler? I can see something called set profiling level here. And under the get, you can see here DB dot get profiling status. This is going to be the one that I'm going to use. R DB dot get profiling status. It is telling that it was zero and slow running milliseconds is equal to 100. So by default, I said that anything which is running more than 100 milliseconds is going to be the slow running query in MongoDB. But the current status is zero. Though they mentioned it as a was, don't think that the was zero is going to be the current situation only. But how do I believe? DB dot get profiling level, the another one. So the profiling levels has three numbers. Those are zero, one. Zero means disabled. Means your profiler is not enabled at all. Your one means enabled. But it is enabled with the default configuration of 100 milliseconds or whatever the time frame you are going to put. By default, it is 100. If you want to change the time frames also, we have the option to change. So the default, whatever the value we have kept here, with that particular value, if you want to see the profiling levels, then you can use the one. Two stands for it is not enabled only for the 100 milliseconds. It is enabled for everything. That is, every piece of operation that you are doing in MongoDB will be recorded, which is not recommended because we do not want to store everything into a collection. So two options that are useful to us. The first option is going to be profiler level, which is equal to zero. That is visible, no profiler at all. The second one is I enable either with the default time frame or the time frame of my choice. So what is the current thing now? It must be disabled. I should get an output of zero here. So zero. What is the meaning now? I don't have any profiler sets up. So the profiling status is zero. So I want to see the performance. So what I should do now? I need to enable the profiler. How to enable the profiling? Again, can you see here? Set profiling level. I said when I'm going with the set profiling level, one indicates the profiler is enabled. Now it is telling that it was zero just like before. Slow meaning seconds equal to 100, but your command is successful. Since it is telling that my command is successful, get this profiling level. Now it is one. So now the profiler is enabled. That is, if any query runs for more than 100 milliseconds, I should get recorded. Now to test that particular one, let's create a collection. For i equal to one, i less than or equal to one lakh, i plus plus. I'm trying to initiate a query which will run for more than 100 milliseconds so that I can see that particular query in my profiler. That's what my interest is. DP dot, let us say EMP dot insert of EMP ID I some mean I'm giving some change. Now it is running. I am expecting that it will run for more than 100 milliseconds. Since it runs for more than 100 milliseconds, I'm expecting that to be get catch under profiler. So here, show DBS, use this, show collections, db.amp.count. So it has 65,000 records. My intention is not about storing the data. My intention is, has it captured or not? Because it runs for more than 100 milliseconds for sure, has it catched or not? For telling that, if you remember, before I start this profiler, I was in admin, and I have shown you some collections, and I said that, there was only one collection available that is called system dot version. In addition to the system dot version, you can see another collection there that is nothing but system dot profile. The moment you enable your profiler in the admin database, we are going to see a new collection called system dot profile, which is going to have all your data. It is not get caught there because we killed it. So what we do is we run that one more time. Since we killed it, it is not identified it. But if it run for more than 100 milliseconds and the other way, oh, God, I can do one more thing. That is, db.get profiling level, it is one. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm going to set this profiling level now one more time. But instead of going with the default 100 milliseconds, I'll go with five. Instead of 100 milliseconds, it is five milliseconds. Now, if any query run for more than five milliseconds, that will get caught. It is still running here, but it is identified here. The reason because it is identified here will be it is running for more than 100 milliseconds. Now you can see that it's an insert command where I'm inserting admin.emp. In the admin database, EMP is the one which is creating this. So what exactly it is creating? Here it is. It is creating employee ID 1. So employee ID 1, 2, 3, it is keep running. Now we can see that it is running from more than 272 milliseconds. From the past 272 milliseconds, it has been running. So your profiler will identify all the slow running queries now. So if you are using either of your replica set or anything, this is the another advantage. Instead of using the go with the individual things, if you go with the profiler, there I'll get clear information about under which server, under which host, under which database, all the details I'm going to get there. But this is the advantage of your profiler. It is still running, but still you can say run one more time. Now you can see that it is actually inserting around employee ID 79,169. All the things which are running for more than five milliseconds, which will be recorded here. This is the current status because it is running in blocks and each block it is loading the time. This is what I like to discuss about your profiler that is under the performance monitoring. Under the performance monitoring, I have three main things. One, go with the db.currentop and killer or go ahead with your em stat that is mongo stat as well as mongota. If not, you can go ahead with your the best one that is nothing but the profiler. Operation checklist, more or less similar to your previous one. So what and all you have to maintain what and all you have to monitor when you are doing your operations obviously file system replication enable means replication sharding journaling hardware monitoring load balancing backups operating system configuration as well as deployments to the cloud hardware these are all the various operations that you do as part of your day-to-day -day work individually each file system you can see here what is this file system is about what are the different configurations you have so again for the monitoring especially if you are in the cluster environment i said that use mongodb cloud manager or ops manager ops manager is nothing but it's your own premises cloud manager is on the mongodb cloud development checklist schema design you are part of the schema design data durability what kind of data i would like to store replication sharding how to do it drivers how to connect with the external software let's say that your client is a java you have front end as java back end as mongodb how to get the connection between them that is called your drivers Again, the schema design, MongoDB supports dynamic schema, except for the underscore ID index, you must create indexes explicitly because underscore ID is a primary index. Remaining all of them are secondary indexes. Ensure that your schema design supports your development type. That is nothing but what is the shard key, what is the thing, what is the maximum size of the document, if maximum size of the document, what to proceed, that is grid FS, all the details. Second, data durability. Ensure that your replica set includes at least three data bearing nodes if I don't have three nodes, the election will not happen. Ensure that these nodes are of majority write concern. The meaning of majority of the write concern is the primary will take care of all the read and write operations. Durability must be high. Ensure all the instances are using journaling. If I don't use journaling during the hard failures, my data will not be recovered. So this is the page where you can find all the drivers that are supported by MongoDB. So these are the various things that are supported by MongoDB. That is, if your front end is either of C, C, C sharp, Java, Node.js, Perl, PHP, Python, Python asynchronous, Ruby, Scala, for all this, MongoDB is going to provide your drivers. That is, by default, every database will come with the driver. Suppose if you are using Oracle with Java, Oracle is supposed to provide the driver for the Java. Each database will come up with the driver. Similarly, MongoDB has wide range of drivers. For an example, I'm clicking the driver. You can see that github.com MongoDB. Let us say if it is a Python driver, it is a Python driver page. Here you can see all the drivers information. You can simply download it and you can use it. Suppose if it is a Java, just change this one alone. You can see here, MongoDB Java driver. It redirects it to the MongoDB Java. Suppose if it is a C, so go to github.com mongodb and select whichever the driver you need. and here you can have one more thing that is you can see here community supported drivers so here community support driver references you can go here and you can see 
what are the basic drivers that are supported under the community servers also additional factors to administer are this is going to be the another thing which is actually tell me what is the basic performance that we need to think about first thing locking performance so what is locking performance as long as i am working on certain thing we are going to put a right lock on top of it so that no other users will be accessing that particular document or a particular collection till you complete your write operation. When some write operation going on, at any point of time, you can have any number of read operations, but there should be only one write operation. That is the mandatory condition across all the databases. At any point of time, there should be only one write request and they can be having any number of read requests read may be anything but write must be only one so when i'm doing the write operation it will get locked so how to maintain that lock is going to be your lock performance there are more number of locks then what will happen as long as that lock is not getting released all the write operations that I would like to perform on that particular document or that particular collection will be waiting in the queue. If there is a more waiting queue, then it's nothing but you are taking a lot of time to get the response from the system. When my response time is increasing, obviously my performance is poor. So always maintain minimum number of logs. So how to maintain the logs? Suppose if I go with the MMAP V1 storage engine, mmap v1 storage engine has a nature that it always create a lock on a collection it offers collection level locking since it offers collection level locking as long as if i am doing one write operation on a one particular record in a collection the entire collection will be locked for all other write operations so performance is badly affected but when i go with the white tiger white tiger is going to create a lock on a document level so only the document to which we are doing the write operation only that particular document will get locked and all other documents will be available so that at least i can reduce the locking time so that performance will be increased second thing is number of connections now if you see that there are two connections available to me this is connection number one this is connection number two so connections are nothing but how many clients are connected to your server is nothing but the connections if your collections are more than 100%, that is your bomb radio system. If you bomb radio system, there are more number of connections, means there are more number of requests. The system should be handled them by using the queues. Obviously, the right performance will be, or obviously, your performance is going to be affected. Then, last but not the least, profiler, the database profiling. So we can go with the profiler operations so that it can have the inefficient IDs. Configuration and maintenance. The first thing is runtime database configurations. That is nothing but what are the best practice that we have to go with the MongoDB operations, that is configurations. While configuring, always select the proper database path, proper port number, proper log path. Those are nothing but the runtime configurations. Upgrade the latest revision of MongoDB. That is always operate at the latest version. Now 4.0 is the latest version, but 4.0 is not started using widely because 4.0, the main thing they come up with will be multi level asset transactions. The multi level asset transactions, still, we don't have the confidence about it because we are doing it in an RDBMS way. But when it comes to the MongoDB, we still don't have the confidence about it. That's the reason it's not widely using it. The well known last version of your MongoDB is going to be 3.6. We are using 3.6 and 3.4 both here, so not a worry. Third thing, manage MongoDB processes. That is, always maintain your daemon servers properly. What will happen if my daemon servers are not running? What will happen? Automatically, the data is going to lose. So, always maintain my daemon servers properly. The next thing, terminate running operation. That is, if any operation is running for more than the defined time, I can go ahead with the kill OP. To go with the kill OP, I need to have the operational ID. To get the operational ID, we will go with the current OP. Rotate log files. The rotate log files is nothing but every time when you start the server, don't create a new log file. Whatever we are using hyphen hyphen log append, the log append is the one which you are using for rotating the same file. We use the hyphen hyphen log append option there. So the new log will append to the existing log. So that I don't need to go with the multiple logs and it will reduce my confusion. 
this is another interesting thing called data center awareness that is if i have let us say three servers and i'm operating from india let us say that my client is actually from the brussels where should i have all my servers do i need to have all my servers available only at brussels or since we are at the software development center we are at the odc's so do we need to have all our servers at the india so how to take a decision where should we have the servers suppose if something goes wrong who will be taking care of the disaster recovery dr servers where should i place the dr servers all this information comes under the data center awareness so in general what we do is if i have three node replica set the primary and secondary of the three node replica set we will keep it under the india itself where the development is happening where the clients are available that is where the people are using more the another server we keep it in the brussels which can be basically used for your dr that is a disaster recovery at the same time if someone would like to request the data the number of users are less in brussels means then we can create a read concern as the nearest and we can operate that server as well so that whoever is connecting from the brussels they will read the data from the brussels server itself whoever is connecting from the india they will read the data from the india server but the primary is in the india so that physical location is very very important that is when you are operating from the different geographic locations how to select your servers is all about your data center awareness the main thing here is going to be the disaster recovery the disaster recovery is going to be the primary thing zones zones are nothing but your parts of your clusters how the data will be distributed always maintain the zones which are equally split up that is go with your load balancer go with your auto split so that your zones will be created accordingly and will be maintained by the mongodb itself so how to take the backup and the recovery in mongodb so what are the various factors that are available and what are the various ways you can take the backup and recovery the server chance also we have seen if i want to know the entire server statistics i can go with server stats db dot server status but only problem will be it will not stay in a single page it will go to multiple pages that is my entire server level statistics i have received here what is the best way to do it exit from here go to the place where my binaries are there this is just like previous but here i am using two more things the two more things are hyphen hyphen http interface and hyphen hyphen rest now the server is started let's connect to this when i have http interface and rest operations are enabled when i have these two the advantage is i can go to any web browser of my choice i can go to the local host and which port my server is running now 27017 add 1000 to that 27017 plus 1000 28017 this is called your web interface right nothing but http interface that is whatever the thing you are seeing there that is if you go for show dbs i can see admin local test there you can go to the name spaces here you can see that admin local and test the test with emp collection let us say so this is test.emp the total status of it then now you can see that local dot startup log here is the local dot startup log and if you go to admin i have three here emp system profile system version now you can see emp system dot version system dot profile that is all the collections under each of the database i can see all the details here itself the startup log information is here third i can also see what is that uptime what is the ssl version what is the db version and if i want to see the list of databases i can see here admin local and test and you can see the size of each one of this as well the main reason why i have come here is before we use server stats status it went for three or four pages i cannot see all the details now if i hit server dot status here the same command i can see here but i can see that in a more detailed way here i can see it from the web page so one of the utility is http interface with rest enabled that is nothing but this one http console and rest interface if i use only http interface only this page will open the individual pages will not open use admin db dot shutdown server exit now if i refresh this page which should not be available because the server itself is not running the page will not be available now i'll start the same server without the rest interface 
hyphen hyphen rest i removed i started connected after connecting i'm going to the web interface now the same thing will be available only difference is if i click any of this before if i click list databases i could see the list databases now i don't now it is telling that rest is not enabled hyphen hyphen rest you have to use if i want to go with the hyperlinks that are available in the http interface then i have to go with the rest interfaces as well that is shutdown server exit now with the rest interfaces i'm running this after this i'm connecting to mongodb now if i go for the list databases i could see them here suppose if i don't know what is the command and what each command is doing here i can see list all commands each command followed by what is the description so that is nothing but your http interface as well as the rest interface server stats either i can see here or the same server stats i can see under the http interface now if i want to go with the individual databases let's say use admin now here use b dot stats now it is telling that what is the size of this particular one what is the name what is the number of collections how many objects are nothing but the number of documents followed by what is the average object size what is the total size of your database how many indexes you have created every piece of information about the database you can get here suppose go with show collections db.emp.stats that is this is bit different before db.stats is for entire database now db.emp.stats that is nothing but collection level statistics that is what is the total number of indexes that are present in that collection entire all the details about the collection am i using compression am i using cache i am using cache memory how much is the cache memory available for it if it is an index what is the b tree structure every piece of information about that particular collection right i have 101409 documents in this the name of this particular one namespace is nothing but admin.emp all the information about your individual action that is if you want to see the statistics i can do suppose if i am in a replica set i think if you remember when i am showing the op log size i have used this particular command if i want to see the replica set status i can go with db dot print replica set information here it is print replication information this is going to give me information about the replica set but here i'm not getting because it is not a replica set if i can use print sharding status i'm going to get the sharding status as well but still it is a standalone server that's the reason i'm not getting those details if i want to go with any of the third party tools you need to download them this is the external software you can see that angela monitoring system you can download this particular one and we can use this particular one so the angela nagias anything with that we can be used but these are mainly for the distributed monitoring systems only so we have one more thing left that is nothing but your mongodb backup methods so here there are four methods available that is we will consider both atlas and cloud or ops manager together as the one entity by using the mongo dump and by using the data underlying files so there are three main approaches for backing up your mongodb so the first method always is going to be what are the binaries that are going to support your backup methods by default there is a binary called mongo dump and that mongo dump is useful for taking the backup of your mongo database if i go for a list of my binaries we have already seen what is called mongo which is nothing but a client mongod which is nothing but a server then we have also seen like mongo s yes, which is nothing but a sharding server when we think about the backup and restore method the first thing which will come to the mind is nothing but mongo dump dot exe here you can see a binary called mongo dump so just use mongo dump i'm just going with hyphen hyphen help so that i can come to know what exactly this mongo dump is going to do for me the help is going to let us know what are the various commands that are available and associated with your mongo dump now you can see here the generic definition is going to be it can be used to export the content of running server into dot json files so what it is telling now if i want to go with the mongo dump let's say there is one server which is up and running there is one server which is run and which is up and running on 270174 just like your normal local server 270174 
Now, if I want to take the backup of that particular server, I can actually depend on your mongodump.exe. That is the first simple mongodump command. That is, just look for what and all the various directories I have. I could see that there are only two directories available. One is going to be data, that is nothing but my database path. Another one is going to be logs. So I'm just trying to log into the machine, that is nothing but I just connected to the Mongo version. And I'm seeing what are the various databases I have here. I could see that there are three databases available. One is going to be the admin, second is going to be the local, and the last one is going to be the test. The test is the one which we created as explicitly yesterday. And within that, we have created one collection as well by using some loop. EMP is the collection. If I see what I have in the EMP, let's say db.emp.findoff, I could see that there is an incremental value for the employee ID and then some random string I have assigned as the name. So this is the current state. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to exit from here only from the client I got exit and make sure that your actual server is up and running. That is your SaaS, sorry, not SaaS, your Mongo daemon server is up and running. There is no changes in that. That is, if I go to my task manager, I could still see that the server is running, but my client alone, I got exit from the client alone. Only the client is got exit. Now, if I want to utilize the Mongo dump, all I need to do is, I don't need to worry about anything. If I want to take the backup of the entire server, simply hit Mongo dump. I don't do anything else. Just the moment I say Mongo dump, and I need to give the port number since it is running on the default port number of 27017. I'm not giving any port number here. Simply, I'm just using Mongo dump. You can see here writing admin.system.version2. Again, admin.emp2, test.emp2, except the local server, all other databases it has taken the backup. By default, your local server will not get backed up. The reason behind that will be the local server will not have any collection except that startup.log. The startup.log is nothing but a, just the startup log there. That's the reason it won't take the backup of it. But if you really want it, you can explicitly take the backup as well. But now, the moment I use the Mongo dump, how it taken the backup? It just gone through all the various collections that is available within the MongoDB server associated with each of the databases. And all those collections associated with the databases, it is simply taken the backup. So where it stored that particular one? So before we have seen what are the directories that are available. Let's see what are the directories that are available now. Before I can have only two, that is your data as well as the logs. But today you can see that there is one additional directory that is available that is called dumps. Let's see what is the content of this particular one. Now you can see that there are three databases that are available admin local and test local by default not taken the backup so the remaining two databases the admin database as well as the test database is available here let's go to admin or let's go to the test first we know that test is a database in which we have a collection called emp now we can see that whatever the collection i have that collection itself will be converted as a bsen file emp.bsen will stands for your bsen file which is associated with your collection then you can ask me what is called this JSON then? The name extension is indicating that it is nothing but it is a JSON, but it is going to be have only the metadata. That is what is the content of ELP.json and where it got stored. So if I want to see them in the test, you can see that there is a JSON file available. And if I, if I click on it, it is telling that it is actually version two ID one name is underscore ID underscore the name space is nothing but test.emp it just has the information about the metadata but this is not the one i'm interested then in. what i'm interested in. i'm interested about what file it has taken the backup simply just go there just open the bsen also with your text pad we all know that bsens cannot be opened just like that there is an employee id as well as there is going to be some string but jsons will not be able to open directly like this because reasons are not human readable. What I need to do, 
I need to convert this Bson into JSON, then only I can see. So I'm looking for some application which actually can convert my Bson into JSON. That is nothing but Bson dump. So wherever your binaries are there, just go for list of them. Now you can see that there is something called Bson dump dot exe. Use that particular one. Bson dump. Which one I want to open? I want to open under the dump. I have the test database. Under the test database, I have emp.bson. Just click that. It is converting that bson file into JSON file and it's displaying on the screen. So it has close to around 65,000 records. So it is trying to show all the 65,000 records for you. But what is my intention? My intention is something like by using your bson dump. You can convert your BSON file into JSON file. You can see it on the screen. Again, one more thing you need to understand here is the test database has EMP collection. So I can see that EMP.BSON and the related metadata here. Yeah? And if I go to the admin database, the admin database has three collections. One is EMP, the second one is system.profile, and the third one is system.version. For each one of this, you can have the metadata file. So what we have understood so far by using the Mongo dump, I can simply take the backup of my entire system, except the fact that it won't take the backup for the local directory. For all other directories, it individual collections also, it will take the backup. All I did is simply I use the Mongo dump. But if I use the Mongo dump, it is going to create a new folder called dump where it is going to store all your data as well. Now, let us say where exactly it is storing this particular BSON file or where it is storing the dump. It is creating a dump directly exactly in a place where your binaries are running. But I'm not interested to create here because it is generally in the location where my installation is there. I don't want to create here. I want to create the same file in a place which is convenient to me. Let us say that I'm convenient to store this particular file in a desktop. Let's say that here I have something called SaaS Studio. I'm just taking the properties of it. Now it is having desktop here. I want to create the dump folder here on the desktop, not on the location where I have my BSON files. So what I need to do again, just simply go with the Mongo dump. If I simply go with the Mongo dump, it is going to dump all the directories in the current folder itself. That is, it is going to create a dump folder and it is going to create. Instead of doing that, I'm going to say that hyphen hyphen out and give that particular path. Now also you can say that it is telling that yes, I'm going to write the data to the dump directory, but the dump directory is not going to be your default dump directory of your binary files. Instead on the desktop, I'm going to create it. This is in the desktop. In the desktop, I just have got two folders. One is going to be your admin. Another one is going to be your test. The admin is going to have your all the collections of your admin, whereas test is going to have all of your collections of your test. What else I can do is let me delete these two. So here itself, create a folder called a dump and take properties of this particular dump now and use this one for, for your here. That is desktop. Within the desktop, don't create just like that on your desktop. Instead, keep your directories under dump file. Now you can see that. The dump directory is the one which is going to have your collections. That is the first thing we understand is simply we use the Mongo dump. It has created a folder called dump folder within the place where my binaries are running and there itself it has created all the collections. This is the first one. Now I don't want to keep it in the location where my binaries are there. I want to create my own place to store my backups. That is the reason we have come up with hyphen hyphen out. The moment you use hyphen hyphen out, it is going to tell where exactly you want to store the data. Now, this time I'm okay with taking the dump, but I don't want all the directories or I don't want all the databases. Don't take admin database as a dump. So just use hyphen D means database. This time I'm telling that take the backup of only test database. Now you can see. It is taking only the backup of test database. If you go to that place, I can see that only test database has been taken the backup. What happened to the admin database? 
I have not taken the backup because I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in only the data that is useful to me. I feel that only EMP data is useful to me. So I have taken only that into the backup. Let me delete this again. This time I'm not interested in the database called test. Instead, I'm interested in the database called admin. All the collections that are present in the admin has taken the backup, just like your previous one. But I'm not interested in this as well. Instead, what I'm interested is this system dot version system dot profile is not going to be helpful for me because those are going to be one is for slow running queries, another one is for the version. I don't want those two. I just need only the data. So take the backup only for the namespace called EMP. So what is the meaning of this one? Is take the backup of the admin database. Within that, don't take all the collections into the backup. Instead, only take collection EMP as the backup. Again, whatever the output of this, don't keep it on the regular location. Instead, keep it on your desktop temp location. Admin, within the admin, only EMP has taken the backup. That is, we have taken entire server level backup, database level backup, collection level backup. Now, we are going one more step down that is nothing but, I'll simply say hyphen hyphen query. I can write my query of my choice as well. For an example, I have EMP ID there. Let's say EMP ID is equal to two. Now you can see that I have taken the backup of admin database. Within that, I have taken the backup of EMP, but this EMP.bsen should have only the document that where my employee ID is equal to two. Use bsen dump, give that file name, followed by emp.bsen there are two records or there are two documents which are having the employee id as two both of them are different you can see that the object id for them is going to be different there are two we have created within that and both of them are going to present there suppose with one i have again two things the same data has come but the data has the different object ids so what we have understand from this mongo dump so mongodump is the binary which can be used for taking the backup of your mongo server by default if i just simply use the mongodump it will take the backup of the entire server which is up and running second i can restrict that one with going only with the database i can restrict that to the collection level i can also restrict that to the document level and i can redirect my output not only to the default location instead from the default location i can take it to the any other location as well so these are the various stuff that we discussed about the then what is called restore the moment you take the backup let's say that i want to do some maintenance work in one of the server i take in the backup of the entire server i restore it into the new fresh server from there i want to continue with my operations let's say i just have given 5000 inserts to a employee collection at the same time i have initiated the backup from the another instance from this instance i'm trying to take the backup of same emp server before these 5000 inserts let's say it has only 1000 records after the insert command initiated let's say that around 100 records has been inserted the remaining 4900 inserts are in process so my server has only 1100 records. if i initiate backup now only 1100 records will be come the remaining inserts will not but this is wrong right so when the client is live and up and running, I should not take the backup. That is called point in time backup. The point in time backup is not available in your Mongo dump. So if I want to take the backup for a live server, I'm talking about the disadvantages here. The second one is, let us say I have a replica set. I want to take the backup from all the servers. So what I need to do, or let's go with the sharding. Let us say I have five node sharding or five shards. I have five shard clusters. I have. I want to take the backup of this five shard cluster. Nothing but five shards means I'm going to have five replica sets. Five replica sets means I'm going to have minimum of five primaries. Only from the primary, if I take the backup, that is more than enough because primaries and secondaries are going to have the same data. That is, if I want to take the backup from the sharded environment, let's say five primaries are there. If I stop this one one by one, let's say that first replica set I have stopped, the write operations I have stopped, then I take the backup. Then I will bring it back to the live. Then I shut down the second one, I'll take the backup. Shut down the third one, I'll take the backup. Shut down the fourth one and fifth one, I'll take the backup. But there in sharding environment, 
though you have shut down your primary one meanwhile if you have any read request from your application and if your mongo router identify that data is available under shard number one what will happen it cannot read think about the right operation during that time the right operations are going to be in the queue that is if i am going with the sharding environment that is the huge system where i am dealing with huge volumes of the data it is very difficult to take the backup from the your mongo dump the reason behind that will be it will not support point in time backup so as long as i have standalone server as long as i have liberty of stopping the server to take the backup there and all i can go with the mongo dump but if there is any situation where i need to take the backup from the sharding environment or a huge server where i need to take the point in time backup without stopping any of the write instructions in those cases your mongo dump will not work in simple words we can say that mongo dump will work fine only for the standalone servers with lower volumes of the data now we already taken the backup now backup is available under the admin database here is the place where i have all the employee person which is where i have the all the employee details where the employee id is equal to one only for one we have taken the backup now my interest is i taken this backup i want to go ahead and i want to restore this data if i want to restore the data i can use mongo restore i need to mention if it is operating from a different port number let's say i want to use it in the same port number so port number remains going to be the same then i want to restore a file the file is present under this particular location that is employee.bson file if i do this particular one just if i hit this particular one whatever the admin database i have within the admin database it is going to choose your emp collection and it is going to replace it but instead what i want to do is i want to create a different database now let us say i want to create a database called rest that will be restored within that i want to store this emp bson second i don't need to use the file hyphen hyphen file doesn't require directly i can do the bson that is mongo restore followed by what is the file name followed by what is the database i want to create now i can see that i need to create a database called rest within the rest database i want to copy all the data from the bson file suppose if i go to the this one now if i go with show dbs now i can see that there is a new database called rest just go to the rest database now the rest database must have emp collection the emp collection will not have all the details but it should have only the details about your employee id equal to 1 and the respective data that is if i want to restore either i can restore in the same directory that is same database or i can go ahead with the new database of my choice if i want to change the collection also i can change that is restore while restoring i am creating it in the rest database but i want to change the collection name it is not going to be emp dot emp collection i want to make it as employee done go back and here just go with the show collections now i can see employee there the employee is going to have the same data just like your em now let us say i want to change this a little instead of going with admin i would like to go from dump.admin that is nothing but the current file that is go for dir now you can see there is a directory called dump directory in the dump directory also we have admin and test the only difference is going to be if i go to this test database now this test database is huge because i have close to 65000 records this one i want to restore now what is the difference i'm going to show you i can go with the database level i can go with the collection level but i cannot go with the query level here but the query level is possible at the taking the backup level so i cannot take query level here but instead of the query level since i can restrict the data and take the backup but while restoring i can restore the existing one so i can have a server level restore i can have a database level restore and i can have a collection level restore i don't have a document level restore the restore option another disadvantage here and that big disadvantage is if you restore you could have identified some of the message let us say no indexes to restore 
it is telling that I'm able to restore everything, but it is telling that no indexes to restore. But we all know that the moment you create any collection, there is going to be a default index of underscore ID that is called your primary index. Even though if there are any secondary indexes also, your Mongo dump and Mongo restore will not restore your indexes. Indexes will not be restored. You need to rebuild your indexes manually. That is, before taking the backup, you need to have a details about what and all the various indexes that are enabled on this particular collection. You need to maintain the track of those details. And when you want to go for the restore, after restoring it, whatever the indexes that were present before taking the backup, all those backups you need to manually rebuild again. That is going to be the most painful task. That is, let us say I have a huge database. In that huge database, one of the collection has, let's say, 20 indexes. Let's say I forget to take the track of that indexes. When I want to go for restore, those 20 indexes information is no more available. That is the biggest problem. When I'm going with the Mongo dump, though it is the easiest method to take my backup, creating the indexes and rebuilding the indexes are going to be the most painful task here. So your Mongo dump method cannot take the backup of your indexes. Now I'm going to use admin and I want to stop the server. Now no server is up and running. Now what I'm going to do is, now I can see that this is the database path, right? Older name called data is going to be my database path. Now you can see that whatever the indexes we have created, whatever the collections we have created, journaling, log, and everything is available here only. Now I'm actually going to the second method of taking the backup that is nothing but copying underlying files. So here what we are going to do is, wherever my database path is there, we'll take the backup of entire database path. For an example, I'm creating a directory called DT1 because I'm using the same thing. Or what you can do is on your desktop, just create a new folder called DB path. That is, you can consider this as a different server itself. So this location I'm going to take and I'm going to start a new server that is nothing but start followed the MongoD hyphen hyphen DB path. The DB path before was a data that is in this location. Now new server location I'm giving, I'm telling that don't take db path from the data but instead take the db path as the dbp but dbp has it is going to have a fresh slate because it is completely empty so it is going to start as a fresh server but that is not my objective my objective is i need to go to the server that i have stopped just now that is in the bin there is folder called data whatever the data you have under the data folder copy that and keep it in your DPP. All the underlying files are simply copied to the new server. And that new server I'm going to use now. Let's say I'm going with a different port number. Let's say hyphen hyphen port 37017 hyphen hyphen log path. The log path also I want to create here itself. That is, this one I can take now, paste. Let me create one logs folder in that. I create a logs folder here. Here also I need to create. Here I want to save the logs. So test.log. Now the server is up and running. Now, if I go to this particular server, Mongo hyphen hyphen port 37017, what you can expect now? You can expect the same setup. You can see that this setup, whatever you have, this setup must be present in the new server also. Done. So what do you have learned here? Second method of making the backup and restore is going to be simply copy the underlying files whatever that underlying data files are there copy that entire underlying data files and use it as a db path in the new server so that my entire databases as well as collections will be appeared under the new client what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages advantages are very simple method simply you can copy it the disadvantages are you are copying everything Ideally, copying your log, copying your white tiger, copying your other things, journaling, diagnosing data, all these things are not required. We are simply copying everything. 
again this also will not be able to rebuild the indexes indexes will not be able to rebuild here though you are copying the indexes the indexes will not rebuild you need to rebuild the indexes manually in addition to that there are some big problems here first thing i cannot take the backup from the live server because if the server is up and running your mongo.log the log will be saying that it will not allow you to copy the files because from the live server i cannot take the backup so that's the reason if you remember i first shut down the server then only i take in the backup so first thing is i cannot take the backup from the live server second thing is i cannot take the backup from the sharding as well that is just like your previous case if i'm going with a huge data servers at least previously i need to stop the write operations alone at least it is in the read only mode but if i want to go with your copying underlying files there is no other option i have to shut down my entire cluster only after shutting down my entire cluster then only i can take the backup from there that is the biggest problem high downtime third let us think of a situation where you have a 150 gb of the sharding server in that the data is going to be only 90 gb but the remaining 60 gb is going to be your op logs you are going to be your normal logs at the same time config servers and everything those are not required right you need only the data not all these details but if i want to go for the underlying files everything will be get copied so you need a lot of space for taking the backup as well as for restoring the data that is the third disadvantage beyond all this is only at a OS level i'm talking about only the directories this copying underlying files will be different for windows and it will be different for other operating systems suppose if i am using linux operating system linux operating system you have the facility to take the backups that is you can have a something called snapshots the entire linux itself will take the snapshot of your entire server let us say whatever the predefined time is there in the predefined time it will take the backups so you can take the latest snapshot from your linux operating system and you can simply restore that as well that is also bulwark now you can see that the data directory i created on my own i copy the data and then i can use the new database path as the db path i don't need to do all this under the linux environment the linux environment is going to have your snapshot system that is it is going to take the backup for every specific time interval so during that particular interval but let's say that it take the backup for every one hour i want to take the backup and restore now the latest available data is by seven o'clock so till seven o'clock whatever the data is there that will be available under the snapshot i can simply copy that and i can restore with the new server so that copying underlying facilities at the OS level is different for linux where i'm going to have lva system which will create all your snapshots at the same time the same facility is available even for the amazon that is nothing but for aws ec2 servers even for the ec2 you have the snapshot system only for amazon aws ec2 or for linux system for these two operating system i can go for your snapshot system level snapshot level of taking the backup and restore as well that is possible only for these two under the copying underlying file you can simply copy the data that is the first thing we have done the second thing will be you can go with file system snapshots that is you can take the file system snapshots which are based on your operating system so what are the two operating systems that we have which will support that one is linux and another one is going to be your amazon ec2 aws ec2 before we have only these three methods or we can say before we have only these two methods but all these two methods are suffering with one common drawback and that common drawback is they will not be able to take point in time backup at that particular point of time if i want to take the backup of the entire system i cannot take it to overcome that one mongodb has introduced a enterprise version of your application and that enterprise version of the ops manager or cloud manager depending upon which cloud you are using whether you are using your own premises then it is going to be ops manager if you are going to use public cloud that is mongodb cloud itself then it is going to be a cloud manager so depends on your usage and depends on your preference you are going to have two piece of softwares that is available called ops manager and cloud manager all you need to do is purchase this particular ops or cloud manager 
and run it in your cluster so that it will be taking care of all the backups restores and everything for example if i go to that particular location that is where my ops manager or cloud manager are available just click on the ops manager here now you can see what exactly the ops manager is ops manager is the easiest way to manage mongodb in your data center it includes monitoring second it will capture continuous incremental and point in time recovery backups at that particular point of time let's say that sharding is there you don't need to stop any write instructions or anything simply just by taking your backup by using the ops manager or cloud manager the entire system will take the, the snapshot but only thing you need to understand here will be this is not a free software it is going to be your licensed version free versions also available but not going to operate in a way that we expect so you need to go ahead with the enterprise version this is for the ops manager suppose if you are running on your office premises i'm not running on the office premises in that case it is not going to be a ops manager then it is going to be the cloud manager the cloud manager has been decommissioned in your mongodb 4.0 but prior to that it was available then the other thing will be atlas that is mongodb database as a service baas suppose this is also again this the free version is available only for up to 500 gb and it is only a single time for an example i have a free version with me suppose if i log in here this is nothing but your atlas any one of you can simply go ahead and you can register for it they are going to give you a free tier for you and the free tier is available only with the limitations if you look into this this is my atlas my atlas maximum size they have given will be 512 mb beyond that if i want i need to upgrade if i want to upgrade i need to purchase how much is the space you require and how you want to proceed everything they are going to guide the free server will be available you can see that i am almost using this from past one and a half year here you can create your own thing up to 512 mb and here you can take the backup the moment you click the backup it is going to take the backup of the entire server continuous backup you can take point in time backup you can take anything you can take here i can go with the history i have not taken the backups yet if i want to take the backup all i need to do is hit backup so this is the place where you can do all your works on your own so mongodb atlas is nothing but it's a database as a service for now i'm using the free service if i want to go with anything more than 512 mb i need to purchase but the moment i purchase your mongodb atlas it is going to take care of all your read write operations it is going to take care of your reports it is going to take care of your backup it is going to take care of your restore now i can see that we talked about the ops manager we talks about your atlas the cloud manager is decommissioned now because the cloud manager whatever the facilities are there that facilities are incorporated within the atlas itself and these are nothing but my mongodb backup and restore methods if you go with the bees and dump or if you go with the restore both of them are actually doing your work by using your json itself it is taking the backup in the bison format and it is also restoring the data into the bison format let us say i want to migrate from rkel to mongodb what are the steps you are going to follow wherever i want to migrate from rdbms to your mongodb what we are going to do is rdbms is going to have so many tables let's say my final output is going to be present in the three tables let us say that if i'm going with the online side there is going to be a products table there is going to be a sales table and there is going to be something like user table there is going to be something like orders table the users which are belongs to my database that is belongs to my site the orders and the products what we will ask is first we will see the testing whether it will be possible or not we want to see so for that case what we do is we will request the rdbms team pull at least 1 million records or at least 1 lakh records for each of this table 1 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh and provide to me so how can you provide to me provide me in the form of a excel file you can export from your current database to the csv file right that is possible universally accepted right so the first step is going to be i'm going to request my rdbms team where we want to migrate from rdbms to mongodb first i will request them to provide my last end user data which is in the table format i ask them to provide in the csv so three csvs will be there 
these three are mutually exclusive for the 1 million products i have the information about the products users and orders we can join all the three after joining all the three i'm going to have only one table and that table can have complete information about the products users as well as the orders and it is of 1 million volume and this 1 million volume i'm expecting to have in csv format they will export to csv and they have given to you the moment you get this particular csv you can have binary called mongo import in the mongodb the mongo import is a binary which will actually import any of csv file or text file or json file these three are the acceptable format that is if your external data is in any of the csv or text or json format your Mongo import will take it and convert that into a collection and will keep it in your MongoDB. Will be able to convert that into the collection. Let's say you have a total of 100 fields in the CSV. With all those 100 fields and 1 million records, it is going to create a collection. Mongo import will do that. Once that collection is available, that collection is a raw collection. Let us say I have a first name and last name of product. At the same time, I have five different prices. Five different prices are going to be MRP, maximum retail price. I'm going to have a sale price. I'm going to have a clearance price. Like that, I have multiple prices as well. All these are different fields in your table. So all these are going to be the different entities or different keys in your document. But what we can do, since all these are talking about the price, I can simply combine all these and keep it in one array, possible. All the first name and last names, I can keep it as a one embedded document. If I want to do all this, I need to have a JSON. So, but I got the input in the CSV file. That CSV file I imported. So I got a collection. And this collection, I'm going to export now. By using the Mongo export, I'm going to export this. Mongo export also going to use the same three formats. It is going to support all the three formats that I have mentioned. That is, it is going to support, you can have your text file, or you can have your CSV file. Now, I can import the data that is in the CSV file, and I can export the same CSV data to the JSON. Raw JSON is available for editing. You can edit all the things in a way you want. So where first and last name is there, instead of having two keys, I can keep it as one embedded document. Where and all similar entities are there, you can keep it into the arrays. Like that, I can rearrange all my JSON. After rearranging all my JSON, I can simply do the import one more time. So after doing this import from the JSON file, I'm going to have my final collection in a way I want. So sometimes people will consider this as the backup and restore method as well. But this one will work fine as long as I have less data. If I'm having a huge file and if I'm having a huge data and if I want to take the backup, I need to depend on the Mongo dump itself. In other cases, I can use Mongo dump, Mongo import and Mongo export tools also for doing your import and restore work. So what I'm going to do now is, so first I'll go with a very simple one. So just like your Mongo export, that is nothing but your Mongo dump. Instead of Mongo dump, just replace your Mongo dump with Mongo export. So here you can see that I'm taking the backup of my test server. In the test server, I have a collection called your EMP collection. At EMP collection, I'm taking the backup. Whatever the output file is there, that I'm calling as hyphen wo, and that hyphen wo, I want to keep it in my desktop. For an example, I want to keep it in the desktop. I would like to keep it here, and I need to rename that as EMP cell. So I'm exporting my EMP database, EMP collection, which is part of my 37017. Now you can go here, use test. And under the use test, I can see the collections. Whatever the EMP collection I have here. So there are 65,543. This is huge in number. You cannot wait for all the 65,543 documents exported into your Excel or JSON. Instead, what we can do is, we can reduce this to a little meaning. I'm creating a new collection here db.employee.insert of something called EMP ID that is going to be I name something called ABC. I'm writing a loop here. For our instance, I'm just creating 100 records. 
Now these hundred records I want to export now. So what is the new one? It is not EMP, it is going to be employee. So the employee database is present under the test environment. I'm exporting to a JSON file. So where should I run? I have to run here. But the moment I run it, I'm ending up with an error. It is telling that there are no reachable servers. The reason behind that will be my server actually operating on 37017. I can connect to 37017 server, but I'm not mentioned that particular one in my Mongo export. So what I need to do, Mongo export, along with all i also need to mention the port number as long as i am not operating on the default port number of 27017 in all other cases i must mention my port number as well now you can see that it connected to localhost followed by 37017 and exported the, all the 100 records just go back to your desktop on the desktop you can see employee.json which is going to have the same 100 cards you can see employee one two three something all the names are going to be seen the same i can do in the import as well so instead of export i'm going to say import i need to mention what database i want to use let's say if it itself i can use let's say i want to create a new database and i need to mention the type by default i can mention the type as json and i need to mention the file hyphen hyphen file Whatever the file just now we have created, same file I can use for the import as well. Now you can see that if I take this particular one and if I do the import now, I need to add the port number. Using the file name EMP as a collection, it created a new database in 37017 and the name of that must be equal to test. So just go back and check. Now if I go for show DBS, I can see that there is going to be a new database called tests. Under this, there should be a database called EMP. Now, if you see the db.emp.findof, I should have 100 records. It's the same data that we have taken. So you can do the import or export work in a way you want. So this is called JSON. Just I took backup of your JSON, and I also exported the backed up JSON into the collection. Now, I said that I don't need to go with the only JSON file. I can also go with the text file. I can also go with the CSV file. Let's do an another example. I'm just going with creating five records. Let's say that presently I'm into the test. Under that, db.test.findof. This is the newly inserted data, ABC. And this data I would like to export now. To export this particular data, what we can do is I can go with Mongo export. So Mongo export hyphen D, it is going to be test and hyphen c collection is going to be your test and i want to export it as a csv file i want to give some names as well as the addresses i want to give the field names because the csv should have the headers the headers i'm giving here is a b c are the headers that i'm going to do i'm calling it as the a name as well as the address and out i have to give the out file i have given here so i can call that as a test json itself but you can see that field names are three there there are three field names available a b and c i'm just changing the field names also as a b c hyphen hyphen port 37017 connected five documents has been exported go to your desktop export it now go to the csv file for the first record only a is there b and c are null for the second record i have a and b c is null three four five the third record fourth record fifth record are normal is you can use the option as the csv file so that it will export as a csv if you want to export as a text file you need to use tsv file tsv stands for your text file like that you can export and you can import your any of your collection to any of the three possible format and the three possible formats are nothing but your json text file and csv file so these are nothing but your mongo import and export methodologies now, thank you Murli for this amazing session and I hope you guys enjoyed this session and got to know the concepts of scalable and available data sets about replica sets, sharding, and also the most important part, which is the administrative part of MongoDB. So guys, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to mention it in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist 
and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!